So I'm not to really include the no, sweet, right? No. Okay. Let's put that to the side. So, I finally decided to make a video. I've been asked a couple times to explain how exactly COVID affects us, how we get infected, why we get sick, and here I want to take a shot at explaining that. Well, really generalizing the entire process, the entire pathophysiology, so anyone can understand. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, if you're not a doctor, nurse, paramedic, or anyone in the medical field, but you want to understand what's going on in our bodies, this is the video for you. Let's dive right in. So, what is the coronavirus? Well, what's really interesting about this is that this isn't the first time that we're seeing this virus. Back in 2002, we had SARS. And back in 2012, we had MERS, both of which are mutations of the coronavirus. And now, well, recently, back in 2019, we had a new version, SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19. Part of the reason why this virus is so deadly is how easy it is to spread from person to person. It can be from fecal oral contact. So, for example, you go to a public restroom and that person didn't clean up too well and you come in contact with fecal debris, then you touch your face and bam, infected. And the most common route is with respiratory droplets. So basically, anytime we cough, talk, sneeze, or laugh, these droplets can come in contact with someone else through their nose or mouth. Now, what it really boils down to is this question. What happens when we're in contact with the virus? You know, I'm so happy you asked. When the virus enters our bodies, either through the nasal or oral pathways, it's going to make its way down to the lungs. And man, does this virus love to attack the alveoli. But wait, what are alveoli? So those are balloon-like structures where gas exchange occurs. You know, where oxygen is able to get into our blood and carbon dioxide is able to leave the bloodstream, cross over to the alveolus and leave our body when we exhale. Now, this is a blown up version of a single alveolus with a portion or section of a blood vessel near it. A couple of things we need to clarify together before we get into explaining the whole process. There are two types of important cells that exist in this area type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes. Type 1 is what's involved in the actual gas exchange process. And type 2 has a job of producing a fluid that lines the inside of the alveolus, protecting it from collapse. Remember that balloon analogy? Think of the fluid like a wax lining inside the balloon. It's going to give it structural integrity. This is what's going to help the balloon stay expanded. Oh, before I forget, the space between the alveolus and the wall of the capillary, this is your interstitial space. And all of this right here, this is your alveolar space. All right, let's get into the fun part. In the alveolus, the virus will actually want to interact with only the type two cells because the type two cells actually expresses a specific receptor that the spike protein can bind to. It's a key to the locked door. Once they join, the virus is able to fuse with the cell and release its genetic information inside that cell. Once inside, two things are going to happen. The first will be that the RNA will replicate itself over and over, making so much copies of itself. Second, did you know that inside our cells, there are structures that can read RNA's instructions, like it's a recipe? Those are ribosomes. Our own ribosomes will go ahead and read this recipe and create proteins, specifically viral proteins, that are modified into the parts of the virus, like the capsules and the spike proteins. Have you guys realized something? We have all the parts of the virus and its genetic information. What can we do with that? Well, our cells are going to put it together and this is how we make more viral particles. During this process, the cells are being damaged and can rupture releasing the viral particles into the alveolar space where it can infect other type 2 cells. When our cells are damaged, they can release these inflammatory molecules. These inflammatory molecules will tell the macrophages, hey, I'm kind of hurt right now. When they activate the macrophages, the macrophages will then release cytokines. Now, in this video, we won't be talking about the different types of cytokines. But what's important to know is that cytokines are chemical messengers and they communicate certain events in the bodies and participate in certain changes, like inflammation, like what's happening in this disease. 
These cytokines can actually interact with the nerves around the alveolus, causing a cough reflex. This dry cough is one of the early signs of COVID. Now, the important changes that occur is that these cytokines will interact with the blood vessels nearby, causing two major events. First one being vasodilation. That basically means the blood vessel will get wider. And the second one is that it will cause the cells that make up the walls of the blood vessels to contract, creating spaces in between them, making it more permeable or leakier. So now plasma, fluid from the blood, are able to pass through the blood vessels and into the interstitial space. Huh, why would that be bad? Because we're gonna put pressure on the alveoli now, making it want to collapse. But not only that, we're gonna make it harder for oxygen and carbon dioxide to want to cross over to the other sides. And it doesn't end there. The fluid can even get inside the alveoli. And when this happens, we wash off the surfactant from the alveoli, making it easier to collapse. With the fluid inside, we're gonna reduce how much area there is for gas exchange to occur. So now with the fluid inside, we have the surfactant actually being washed away and reducing the area where we can interchange oxygen and carbon dioxide. The pressure from the accumulating fluid in the interstitial space building up outside the alveoli is gonna make it want to collapse. And also the space from the wall of the alveoli to the wall of the blood vessel is a lot wider, making it harder for gases to reach their respective sides, causing hypoxemia. This is when we start having respiratory problems and difficulty breathing. We'll be breathing a lot more profoundly and hyperventilating at this point. Know what else this inflammatory reaction is gonna cause? It's gonna cause white blood cells like neutrophils to pass through the blood vessels and into the alveoli to fight the virus. They basically want to destroy the virus and they do their jobs well, but when they're done with their jobs, they die and release these toxic byproducts to kill even more of the virus, yes, but they also destroy healthy cells as well. So we know the virus is affecting our type 2 cells and the neutrophils can be damaging our type 1 cells and other cells in that area. Remember that type 1 is actually involved in the gas exchange process, yeah? Well, now with the alveoli collapsing and filling up with fluid, we have the cells that allow for gas exchange being destroyed or damaged, making the work of breeding a lot harder than it already was. As these other cells are being destroyed, we have to start to make a pool or like a soup of dead and damaged cells, proteins, debris, macrophages, and neutrophils. And the formation of this soup is called consolidation, making it next to impossible for these alveoli to complete their functions. So recap. It's a pool of dead cells and debris which will cause a productive cough, which really gives life to the expression coughing your lung out. Because the body is trying to get rid of the trash, but even if we could, the type 1 and type 2 cells are already destroyed, so most function of gas exchange will be lost during this time. This inability to take up oxygen and take out carbon dioxide will create a low presence of oxygen in the blood. This low presence of oxygen is going to increase the heart rate, make us breathe a lot faster, and make us work so hard to try to even catch our breath. We ain't done yet. Remember those cytokines? They're gonna enter the bloodstream and course their way through all parts of the body. What's that gonna cause? Well, for one, they're gonna make their way up to the central nervous system, the brain, and they're gonna interact with a structure called the hypothalamus. This hypothalamus basically acts as a thermostat. Once the cytokines interact with this hypoth hypothalamus, it's gonna reset it and tell it to increase the heat. What do we call it when we have an increased body temperature? Fever, we call it a fever, but we ain't done yet. It gets worse. Those same cytokines that cause vasodilation and leakiness near the lungs seeps into the bloodstream and makes its way throughout the body causing the same effects. What's gonna happen if all of a sudden we increase the diameter of the pipes? Pressure is going to drop. When pressure drops, nutrients and the little bit of oxygen present can't make it to tissues and organs, reducing its perfusion, which can lead to organs starting to shut down and fail because they're not getting the sufficient nutrients and oxygen that they need, and they're unable to get rid of waste products. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching the video. It really means a lot. Wait, one more thing. Why can't we smell? Let's take a look at our nasal cavity. In this region, we have olfactory nerves that detect chemical odorants and process them so we can smell different things. These nerves have support cells. 
that basically maintain the health and function of the olfactory nerves. The virus can actually interact with these support cells because they have the same receptor, that same door, like the type 2 cells in the lungs. Once they bind and the virus does its thing, these support cells are damaged. And the olfactory nerves can't function as normal, hence a loss of smell. And the loss of taste? Well, our tongues can still detect the different tastes, but the processing is done with the help of smell. Majority, really. But we've already lost smell, so now the intensity of taste will be reduced. If you stuck around for the entire video, thank you so much for watching. And remember, they can't fool you if you don't know.